Hello and welcome, Rocket League fans. We are here live with the fourth week of the EGFC, that is the Electronic Gaming Federation. I'm FBI Tugbutt, I'm joined here today with Dor. We got Juke down there, producing away, making our jobs as casters just so much easier, and I'm ready for the day. Yeah, we got good matches on the horizon. The first one's one I've been wanting to watch for a while. Oh, yeah. Wichita State, who are... Two and two, but this is like the least convincing two and two I've ever seen. <laughs> they just this this team. They came in the first two weeks and we we're like, this team's good. I, they're going to challenge the top of the league. But mm -hmm. I mean, they're taking two hard losses against two difficult teams. They're going up against University of Delaware, which is arguably one of the best teams here, and definitively the team that we saw the most improvement out of during the break. So I mean, this is stiff competition just to start off the day. The teams following this, I mean, they only get closer. They really, really do. Let's get. That little schedule up here on the stream or run through these. I do believe you and I are doing the first three together. Is that correct, Dor? Yes, sir. It's going to be UD versus Wichita State, like I mentioned, followed by Villanova and DePaul. University of Connecticut and Georgetown playing shortly afterwards. Fairfield, Fairfield and Quinnipiac. Then RIT versus University of Colorado, which, ooh, that might just be the match of the night right there. That's a good one. And then Hofstra trying to take on the giant UT yes. Arlington to round things out that rit university of colorado matchup that's one you're really going to want to stick around for yes what a way to round out the day door hofstra university taking on ut arlington 8 30 right here now there is uh what there's extra rocket league action going on on the over uh what the uh this is official egf that is egfrl so lots of rocket league going on here the electronic gaming federation no shortage of it let's get it started uh, let's take a look Wichita State in the orange UD locking it down in blue currently playing a little bit of defense what they've been known for for a long time Tug last season it, them and RIT constantly fighting for that second place behind UT Arlington UD the most defensive team we've ever seen here at EGF but with this one pickup of Vixa during the mm. offseason they've created so many more attacking opportunities you can see right here, great little touch up their teammate, fakes out, pass back, shot from Rain is going to be the one that goes in off a double touch. At 4.30 on the clock, it's a comfortable lead here for UD. Yeah, 25 seconds in, already a uh, score on the clock, and that's going to be University of Delaware with a nice little start, can't argue with that one. Uh, very well set up as well, right? It wasn't just an easy single shot. Out. Gun around is Rain, trying to take this one over the side, Mr. Gopher bringing it out the corner, Grau and Vixa will meet him on the other side, that being two-thirds of your University of Delaware squad, grabbing the other member there. No members unfamiliar if you're familiar with the Rocket League scene here in North America. No, Washington though, they've got, or not Washington, it's Wichita. Have a good bit to uh, to prove. It's weird seeing an, another WSU that isn't Washington. <laughs> so that is fair, them go that is fair. It. Good esports org, but this one's dangerous here from UD. Mm. They're looking for a second mm -mm. to get their lead up to two. Solidify themselves in here. Good stuff from Grau. Honestly, a really creative player. Rain is going to be the one to finish that off. Another goal for the man. Really good striking mm -hmm. so far from the UD side. And I like the pressure that they've built up. This is what we didn't see from UD last season. It's just consistent, aggressive play. Uh, they were so set on playing defense and playing counterattack that a lot of the time they forgot about certain aspects of the game and it really left them open in a lot of ways, but they're not letting Wichita State push them around at all. No, they are not. That is going to be the name of the game, controlling the pace of this, not letting your opponents get any breathing room door. I'm all about it. 90 seconds in, two scores up, pretty comfortably for the side of the University of Delaware. And now just an easy peasy third one from Rain. Three shot attempts, three goals. Man's batting a thousand. Yeah, this Wichita side is having a lot of trouble on the defensive end. It's yeah. mostly because they're not doing too much proactively to try and stop these plays coming in. They're not stopping them at the cause, which is what you really need to do to shut down a team like UD who are so strong when it comes to things like ball possession. These attacks in the midfield, oh my God, Growl. What a sick little flip reset. Nothing came of it, but it looks sexy as hell. Yes, it did. Angel of Death almost descending from above there. It made it look good while he was doing it. Yes, that was Man Growl showing off again. Nice midfield stop here. Qui-Gon Jim on over teammate. Backing up. Okay, so Zenova company now going on the defense here. Growl giving him the business so far. A lot of unwanted interaction. There's over the top. Vixa actually with not that great of an angle. Growl's going to 
jump on top of that over the top after Rain did pass that one out. Still fighting over possession of this one though, Dor. Uncomfortably bad right now for Wichita State. And that three gold deficit, right? That just matters so much. They have to play more aggressive, but then it leaves them open to more goals. And against a team like UD, I mean, they're gonna—they're not gonna miss any of these opportunities. Growl's gonna make one out of a 50-50. Ball gets laid back center. Fortunately, the UD player won't land. Wheels down. Creates a shot for Qui Gon Jim, one of our favorite names, Tug, around it here. They—they they get real creative with some of them. This is a uh, certainly notable to say the least. The gameplay, however has been not exactly what we expect from Wichita State. We wanted a lot more pressure out of them, but they're just not giving it to UD. Yeah, at a certain point, you just have to dump everything into aggro, into the offense, right? There's nothing to be lost. Now, this is first game, love to be said for warming up and whatnot, but this is so far just a Wichita State that's uncharacteristically not showing many signs of life. I'm going to say that one. Minute 45 on the clock here, Dora. Oh, good challenge here by Zenova. Could he get... Oh, two big 50-50s, but Qui-Gon yeah. Jim does not in position quite yet. Can knock this one up the wall. Two defenders can be scrambling back low on boost, but not taking advantage of. The ball is lobbed over, but there's going to be two UD players to try and stop that one. It's fixed it downfield. Not a great touch on the ball, but the demolition should give them the space they need to work with here before trying to put this one into the... Oh, no. He's on a killing spree tug. He's looking for more. One to set up ground. Not quite. It'll be a back foot back into no man's land here in the corner. And nobody from Washington State really wants to contest this for fear of just losing the possession back again, right? You clear the ball, it's yep. square back into the hands of UD. They beat you in the air, and then all of a sudden you're left with one defender trying to stop a rip from Vixa. Oh my god, he oh, just yeah, so stop! I, I really wish we had counters for these doors. I think that's six within the first four minutes of this matchup. That doesn't say anything about the electrifying and explosive pace of this game so far. I'm not sure what will. That's number seven. I am going to start keeping track here. That's oh number eight, eight? right? <laughs> yeah, uh, faster than this play-by-play -play caster can count them. Maybe they're paying attention. They're just giving the people what they want. Fire and brimstone is all that's left of these Rocket League cars. Now at eight, everybody here has taken a dive so far, on average, if everybody. Yeah, but there was enough for everybody, too. I guess I should say like that. Door. I, I got to know, Tug. What happens when you run out of fingers to count on? Uh, I start with the toes, but I only have nine toes. I'm just kidding. I've always wondered how, like, <laughs> like how many people have you met before that only had nine toes? You never know, right? <laughs> yeah, you don't the, ever think the about that. Speculation of and you don't know is so much more threatening than anything <laughs> else there. And you, you don't know about my, my missing tenth toe. <laughs> <laughs> it's a comfortable 3 0 win for them. It has slowed down though. Which does mean I think they fell back early into this game they certainly got a chance out there a little bit more warm wow. up and as long as he can start avoiding these demos like what that's what nine now mr it's professional ten. mathematician is that it's ten shoes double digits dude, dude, putting in work right and we now. got what eight of those in just in the first four minutes or so last two or three coming down to the last minute now three zero a handed victory not for lack of trying the wichita state coming through Three shots, Mr. Gopher, two shots, Zenova, two shots, Qui-Gon, Jim, uh, even Pepper and a couple saves there for Mr. Gopher. So a decently well-rounded team here is just, uh, there's just zeros in that, uh, in that goal column, right? Yeah, and honestly, I was, it's weird, because the first two times that I got to cast Wichita State was in the first mm -hmm. two weeks, and I didn't get to see them again. And it, I, I'm honestly disappointed. I know they've had a rough past couple of weeks playing against some of the top teams, but this is pretty unfounded, right? They've been slow to come out of the gate, which feels unlike any Wichita State team. Whether you yeah. go uh, talk about their Valorant team, whether you talk about their Rocket League team, or you can even go to the org that that, that uh, spawned out of Wichita State Esports, which is the Wichita Wolves. Their Rocket League <laughs> team has been doing, from what I understand, fairly well alongside their R6 team. It's a well-known name. Like, yeah. it's, it's well-known, and this team has some pedigree to them, and we know they can perform. It's just been a rough night so far. Yeah, uh, once and again, like Dor said, team organization marked for their aggression and aggressive play and the advantage that they get there consistently from just, uh, you know, you, you know what you're going to get when you got this Wichita State lined up on the other side of the pitch from you. Now, we had a very, uh, I think we're going to go to a short break because those uh, teams were getting set up or are we good to go? Floating voice. We should be good to go if you just go ahead and join lobby. The yep. it's been posted in the yep. chat. We'll be you. all yep. bueno. It's Game number two between Delaware and Wichita State, though. I mean, things I want to see here: stronger midfield Let's control from Wichita State, 
uh more aggressive play on the attacking side to try and keep that ball down there give their players time to rotate back and then on the defensive side i i think the rotations really let them down like in a number of ways how many times did rain just get a free shot on the net goalkeeper standing square in the middle like, what are you realistically gonna do did, did rain get all three of those did rain get all three of those scores door i think he may have. i know he got the first two and they were very very quick but mm -hmm. uh not sure even so that's uh speaking to your point right for a while, he looked invincible. Well, we know sometimes the mighty can fall here at EGF. <laughs> what can Wichita State do to try and finish this one? Zenova controlled into the corner. Taken away by Grau. Oh, this is going to be a rough one to try and save. Ooh. Goes for the bump dodge by the Wichita State player for now. Zenova up the wall. What are you trying to do with that one, though? Gets knocked back into the corner. They can play this for possession. This is the one that I want to see them try and challenge and not let go of that they did in last game. It's gonna be a whiff, but it's not the end of the world because they did buy a challenge. They did buy time. This is better already from Wichita State. They just need to find that one shot. Qui-Gon Jim being as careful oh. as possible. Rain looks like they could wrap around this ball. Just barely not able to put it in though. As Gopher comes in for a sigh of relief from Wichita. UD are still putting on the gas. Yeah, really are. No reason to take that one off, foot off the pedal quite yet. Again, a team that is marked and finds value all day long for their aggression. 60 seconds in though, and this is a Wichita State squad that has done markedly better at this point in the other game. I do believe they were down 2-0 in the first 60, right? No, the first 90, that's what it was. I, uh, you know, short-term memory can't be expected. Oh, Grau coming through, making that one into a reality. You speak it in a shell up here, Dor. Yeah, you cursed them big time there. The second you <laughs> mentioned a goal, Grau was like, oh, me? Oh, me? Little goal? goal? Me? Flies in, the, one uh... more up to UD. 356 on the clock. We're crossing the 60 second mark. We're not quite out of that 2-0 at 90 uh, point quite yet. Wichita State, though, have looked significantly better ever since the uh, center point of last game. Great challenge here by Zenova. It's a dangerous situation. Rain, luckily, though, going to get a touch on it. Going to be right out to Gopher. He puts it up, Vixa. Good clear. And this is one thing we know from UD, right? For as much as they've been learning how to play on the attacking side, much to the chagrin of Vixa, it has been the defensive side that they've made their name on. They know how to do this. It is so difficult to score on this team. An attempted bump on the rain isn't even going to be enough to finish that one off. Aggressive look from Mr. Gopher, but a ball whiff makes a dangerous opportunity here for UD. Great clears, though, from the Wichita side. They found an open net, but they can't hit it. Wow, yeah, so decently close. This is a squad that's putting on a show, if nothing else, right, Dor? Man, oh, man, defensive size left and right back and forth on this ball again goes initially to go live in the middle part again i would love to know just how long this ball has spent in that middle third so far he yeah, staggering amount of time i'm certain <clears throat> approaching halftime here and only an advantage of one again same time last game entirely different story Grau and company actually looking a little bit lost there not really able to maintain possession or even really get it for very long at all. Another midfield possession. Big shot over top from Wichita. Is it in? It's far down. It's bouncing around. And mm. finally, mm -mm -mm. Up, even up the score, Wichita State. I, I think this is what we were looking for. Pressure, UD are having to feel like they commit time and time again. And that's the third, second or third time we've actually seen them with three men committed into the attacking side of the field. In Wichita State, lobbing up all over top. That's just the first time it's actually gone in. That's the yep. only real difference there. Been strong control so far from the orange side, much more so than in the previous game. Even for the little mistakes they're making, UD hasn't quite been able to punish yet. Yeah, I mean, look at these numbers so far, Dor. Wichita State now with seven shots. Oh my goodness, but it's Grau and Co. that are making this one look easy. Two shots for Grau, two goals on in, and assists for both of his teammates. Fantastic stuff. Four saves total, none for Wichita State. Yeah, this isn't a closable or an unclosable gap, rather different from the previous game where that three goals just felt like forever to try and get rid of. One goal in Rocket League, not that bad. Score that one on a whim that one off of a big lob overfield UD though the big difference now is that they're gonna be feeling a lot more comfortable and trying to play defensive or are they big double commit over top Zenova to lay it out wide Ooh. if they plays back fast it could be a huge hole in the defense pulls wide open for Qui-Gon Jinn to come in and lay it on man down, oh man like episode one. <laughs> right in half right down the hole <laughs> fantastic stuff tying this one up this is a 
situation now that Wichita State has enjoyed with the 1-1 tie earlier, but correct me if I'm wrong, Dor, have not been in the lead at any point during this matchup. No. I mean, they're, they're happy to close. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Ground. Great save by Qui-Gon and Jim. Buys him at least a little bit mm. of time. Ow. Left here. Qui-Gon and Jim. The entire world is his oyster, but he's no fisherman quite yet. 130 on the clock, and it's Zenova putting on the pressure. Wichita State are looking really good here. I mean, UD's finding counterattack opportunities. They're creating really dangerous situations, but as far as actual pressure goes, I feel like it's been Wichita for the majority of this game. Who's had yes. it? This game, too, absolutely. Qui-Gon Jim just missed a perfect layup there by a couple of degrees. Uh -oh. Anything different, we'd be looking at a 3-2. Oh, no, Zenova, that's not where you're supposed to park that one. Oh, and again, the sidebar actually paying off in spades for this Wichita State squad. Now, over here, Blue, and that's University of Delaware, trying to round this one out. 60 seconds, door. Dangerous ball towards the center. Wichita desperately wanting to clear this one. UD committing pretty heavily. That's an open goal. So he shot off the backboard over the top. Can he get it, Mr. Oh. for No, just wide. He's gonna lay it in now to Qui-Gon. Jim still. Man. Oh, pinging from one end of the field to the other every 10, 15 seconds. Another team's getting an opportunity. This time it's Brow mm. trying to lay it off the back wall. Good challenge by Zenova. This is everything that I wanted from this Wichita side in between these previous two games. The pressure in the midfield was the key here, though. The entirety of the game has just been Wichita challenging every single ball and with paying yes. off, which should be a pretty easy clear for them, but a bad touch gets fixed out by Rain. And they're, uh, they're slightly worse touch. Aggressive bump. Great job by Mr. Go for coming in to clean that one up, though. It's UD still large and in charge. Yeah, 10 seconds. Dora, I think we're going to purchase ourselves a little bit of extra Rocket League early. This is only game two of our first series for the EGFC week number four. We are in overtime, my friend. Yeah, it's so much closer to what I actually wanted out nope, of this game. We, we, we know how close they should actually be skill-wise. We've seen them each play before. Which shall we know they've got it in them. They got to close one out though, because this would be match point for UD, which makes them just so much more uncomfortable. With the goal being the difference, it would be a shame to see it go that way. Zenova now up the walls, trying to put Wichita in a good position. But UD, what they want to do is do what they did before the overtime went down. And that's just to apply a boatload of pressure onto Wichita. And they've done exactly that so much in the attacking half. Looking, Vixel one more time for another demo, make it 11 but he won't be able to. Goalkeeper still there. Growl aggressive. It's going to be countered. Qui-Gon Jim, beautiful redirect, but it's up towards the backboard to be cleared away by the blue side. Yeah, these, uh, these backboard rebounds, the redirects and more, have just been absolutely beautiful. This is a Wichita State squad that's simply operating differently. Oh my God, Zenova getting that one and earning that epic save on top every way shape and form 60 seconds in no clear advantage quite yet but again not for lack of trying it's not looking great right now for wichita they've been boost starved for the past 20 30 seconds that was yeah. the first major boost pad i've seen them pick up in a very long time they found the aggression they found the counter attack qui-gon jim front flipping his way to the center of the field but by god he's gonna get there eventually a minute's passed udn looking for one more cross to try and seal this thing out once and for all is vixa Playing it in Qui-Gon Jim. That is a critical reset for them. That's going to be a full boost reset for Wichita State, as well as the ball possession back in their favor. Yeah, Mr. Gopher trying for this one. Gives it up to Qui-Gon. Perfect execution on that one. That centered Mr. Gopher thanking his lucky stars. He had a little bit of boost on that one. It's a fantastic point, Dor. This team is boost starved overall. Can only do so much, even for a team like Wichita State that wants to challenge everything. Vix has been such a problem in this midfield right now. Every single ball that goes out towards half. Vix is getting his grubby little wheels on it, and he's putting it right back in towards the Wichita goal. And it's just so dangerous. Wichita are going to have to find one solid attack here and make the most of it if they want to win this overtime right now because UD have put on the pressure, and they're not taking their foot off the throats of Wichita no, State. They are not. Wichita State has some really good rebounds. If these were more on point, just a uh -oh. little bit more, that would have been a couple different goals, but... <laughs> That was Zenova back. Did not get credited with the save on that one, unfortunately. But hey, they're just points. They're all made up. Two and a half minutes into overtime. We have purchased ourselves half of a game with this. Mr. Gopher up. Mr. Gopher out. Nice pop there down the bottom. Rain trying to get the interaction. Trying to really interfere with defenders there. But not going to happen so easily. Three minutes coming up in about 10 seconds, George. Oh, it's feeling like Wichita are running out of gas right now. 
Boost storming away UD. This is going to give them a lot of space to work with. Big touch by Rain, but remember, they're spending boost just to get there. In Wichita, they've still got their own yeah. to fall back on. Big touch down the line for Gopher. Centers it straight up for Nova. Picks it luckily, though, is going to be the one member of UD who actually still has boost left in that gas tank. There's Gopher. Demo and a touch, not able to get it around the defensive player. The midfield control continues to be the most impactful part of this entire game. Yeah. Touch to the side. Open goal in size, but he can't get control of the ball. It's going to be a demolition to hold on for Zenova. This ball's still stuck here in no man's land. No one really knows what to do with it. But really love to see a lot more demolitions coming out. They've shown a previous position to want those already. Now just utilizing them in a little bit different way. Fix a stretching out for this one, mitt and all. There's a lot of pressure on ground. Now with a breakaway, a little bit. Qui-Gon on the other side. Qui-Gon down, shot up, shot not down. And again against wall, wow. Gonna be kicking himself for that one. Oh, gets past him, a crowd just absolutely coming through redemption status all day long. Is that six minutes? That's six that is minutes since the last quarter. amount of time. We, we effectively played two games of Rocket League to yes. both people. I mean, if you throw in all the overtime, you throw in all of the replay cam, that was at least 10 minutes of Rocket League that was played. In Delaware, I feel like they are in that. Wichita State, I mean, they were keeping up for a long time. They were keeping up goal-wise, but trying to keep up in terms of just sheer defensive potential and sheer attrition, there's nothing that UD is better at in this game than being able to play the long con and just not get scored on. Because that was the goal of that entire sequence of plays. It was just not get scored on. It wasn't about trying to score a goal. It wasn't about playing aggressively. It was about lasting longer than the other team. And I don't think you could ever beat UD at that game. Yeah, just the war of attrition, right? Really was... Uh... Between what you, you think about the individual sources of, uh, or well, resources, right? Uh, straight up men on the field, right? We saw loads of demolitions. That resource was negated frequently. Boost, time. Now we got down to overtime. That resource just throw, goes out, right? Because everybody, it's the same amount from those. One second at a time, right? Yeah. I mean, I still have to applaud Wichita State. They fixed a lot of the things I wanted. It just came down to overtime. The one goal made the difference. A boatload of shots. For both sides, it's the saves oh. that really helped Wichita out. They were doing some really strong goalkeeping. I think if they can find one well-placed shot from half field, I think that's their ticket in. That's where UD has been caught out most, ironically enough. Uh, it has been their transition from defensive to the attacking side of the field, which is something that we saw from them earlier on in the season, right? For as much as they've improved attacking-wise uh, compared to last season, and as good as they are defensive with last season being there, it's kind of the shift in between those that's the point where they're vulnerable. And we saw two goals from Wichita State being scored exactly at that transition point. It's just being able to identify that and take advantage of it. Yeah. When you realize you're in that advantageous position, not only taking advantage of it, but knowing how to do that, right? And that only comes again from your thousands of hours of Rocket League, especially these higher levels. Uh, if we need, I'm not sure what other point of fact or logic we would need to point out these are two extremely well matched teams well very evenly matched teams uh except for our three minutes of overtime plus growl coming through making it look easy though see university of delaware comes through and puts up these kinds of scores but wichita state their performance in game number two is nothing short absolutely herculean i use it every cast I mean, it's about getting there, right? You just have to meet that scoreline once. Keep yourself alive for right now. Good touch. Uh -oh. It's going to be a free one for Wichita. Yeah. You know, UD, I, I can't <laughs> tell. Let's see. No, it's just, oh boy, Grout's kicking himself. That was just yep. a whiff kickoff. He went for the diagonal uh, roll and big, big, big miss for UD. Those early goals have really been almost the entirety of the reason they've been afloat, right? The first game was decided all by those first three, and it might just be another set of early goal for Wichita, still keeping on the pressure. But if you look back to game two, they had two early goals there as well. And honestly, I think those matter more than almost anything else for UD because it allows them to go back and fall back on their defensive style. Whereas when they're playing, even when they're playing from behind, they can't do that. All of a sudden they fall into what is a relatively weak state. No, I completely understand. Always want to have that lead just purchase so much touch. more breathing room. And I really feel like, oh my God, Goodness, bounces back and forth and rain makes it fall down. Yeah, I mean, it was a fantastic save by Zenova yeah. for as little boost as they appeared to have. Not able to get there for the second one, but for 3v1, it's all you can really ask for. The rotations of Wichita State were cut off. 
finally there. Let's see what they can do to try and answer back because after the last two games, I mean, I'm not convinced they're not going to answer back. They've looked pretty good and every time UD scores, Wichita manages to come back out swing. They're putting the pressure on three members for it. They do have to be a little bit careful here, trying to boost starve them away right now. Take everything out of the hands of UD. In fact, UD actually just progressed out to the midfield to take away some of the boosts there to try and pull themselves back in. It leaves the goal open though for a 1v1. Decent shot from Rain, but not much to be found off the back of it. It's gonna be pressure from Zenova. None of this is particularly threatening to UD though. I'd like to point out, none of these plays are super creative from Wichita. I don't mean that in like the most negative way right now, but if you wanna be out UD, you need to be using your mechanics. You need to be using every single trick in the book. Otherwise, they're just gonna read you like a pamphlet. So far, it's been what they've done. The defense has looked incredible from the blue side. He's been able to stop everything. Maybe not until now. The demolition does matter here. Little instructional pamphlet so far will pan off in spades. What I want to point out, Dor, is that it kind of seems uh -oh, like these... that's not There cool. you go. Okay. Perfect example. Uh, Grau and company, University of Delaware, are taking their points off of well-executed plays, right? Wichita State so far, they've... At least one of their goals from last one and the goal here are just coming off of the University of Delaware's mistakes. You know, they're getting these goals of, of just from taking advantage of big holes that they see just like that. How perfect, right? You know, we call it Caster's Curse sometimes, but that is just an absolute encapsulation of what I was trying to say. Thank you, Grau, on the previous shot. Thank you, Qui-Gon Jim, on this one. Come through and make me look smart on broadcast. I appreciate it, guys. Jesus. Well, let's see what we can get up to here. 3-2, Wichita fires back almost instantly here. With half the game gone, I honestly feel like this could be the exact same situation as the last game, where we just head into an overtime that lasts God knows how long. Vix is going to easily be able to put that one in, extend the lead back up to two. But there's plenty of time here for the orange side. Wichita State, I will say notably, have done a very good job on defense when they have to, but the issue comes to the same exact spot where you do. When they try and transition back, Instead of uh, the issue that we see with UD, where it's they're vulnerable whenever they shift from defenders to the attacking side, it's the other way around for Wichita State. Their transitions back into defensive rotations just have been very lackluster, and you find open goal opportunities like that, or 3v1 opportunities that UD have continuously been willing to commit to, and I've got to say, it's a very, very good gamble for them to take. It's paid off massively. I'm in spades. I'm with it. Um, I, I, at this point, oh! Man, oh man, this is like you just said, man, like you just said. These rotations from the side of Wichita State, they're just not super on point. They're just not super clean. And this is them getting caught with their pants down, right? Coming back around a little bit, nobody is really in point. It's not a situation of too many cooks in the kitchen. There's nobody up there. There's nobody whipping things up in the kitchen. There's no food getting cooked. Two minutes back, Wichita now facing down the lead that lost them game one, tasked with having grown all that much to try and win it out here. Got an opportunity, but it's not exactly threatening. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised to see UD just put on the parking brake. Just pull on that lever as hard as you can. Crack the damn thing <gasps> on the floor. Don't let there anything in. Nova comes in for the first. This is a, it's a closable gap tugboat. Yeah, it really is. I mean, this is barely more than halftime. And whatever happens in our first half of games, completely, completely possible for the second half, especially given overtime situations at the end, a lot more. These two teams already showed what they can do in overtime. I'm ready for it already. Two scores separate Wichita State from another game three overtime situation. Last time they did not make that, but if the comeback is gonna happen, if the overtime purchase is gonna be secured, it's gonna have to start right now, Dor. Oh, Nova. That was dangerous. He got the ball up. It was looking like a really deadly dribble, luckily though. It's UD, able to find the touch, goal wide open, no! Whoo, they are very happy to have that one orange player, Swan Dog, locking it down, Rain looking to keep the pressure up. And this is all UD have to do. UD don't have to score. UD can just continue getting touches on the ball, keep threatening at the Wichita goal, and not let them commit into the attacking half like they really want to. Beautiful doink! Oh, from Growl, what a grand redirect. Let's watch this again. Just honestly, kind of let let it speak for itself, right? Look at Rain right there. How fast was that pass coming in? We know the shot was 92. How fast was that pass? Not slow. I'll tell you that much. Back to a three-goal <laughs> lead here for UD, which uh, licking their wounds currently. And honestly, I'm at, I'm at the point where 
I think even if UD are putting on pressure, you just got to boot that ball and get into the attacking half. I mean, with the timer being as high as it is, you got to be going for every single one of these, not letting them go for free. Which I'll state back out. No, they let that one cross their goal. That's a lot of time what? taken away. 15 oh. seconds now burnt away at their final minute, maybe just of the match. Double commit over the goal. This is just an awful situation for them. Lays to the back corner. Great shot by Vixa. Better save by Zenova. Swan Dog's got an opportunity still. Bouncer towards the midfield. Yeah, Nova looking to put this one in towards center, but Fixa again. Just, you know, considering yeah. it's a new pickup for this season, and I say it every time. I know we're five weeks in, and these guys have been playing together for a while, but Vixa oh, looks like the best team, line. which yeah. is just crazy to say. It It's all the rotations center around Vixa. All of the midfield uh, possession centers around Vixa. And even though we know, we know Grau, Captain, locking it down, fantastic guy. I, I mean, this team has just evolved with the pickup of one new player. It is absolutely beautiful to watch the encapsulation of teamwork, uh, what cooperation here, right? Just watching this team come together and start to play, you know, from fresh, right? Love to see it. I've seen other two players for seasons past, different story, newer player, newer team entirely. 7-3 will be our scoreline, 7-4, maybe 8-3 will only difference is here as we are in our last little shot. University of Delaware hath taken it in 3-0 fashion, but that does not speak to how close our game number two was. Yeah, I mean, game two was what we wanted to see. And I think as much as I'm all for going for the substitution there and mm -hmm. trying to just, you know, get your players in, we know that they're probably even skill level. There's also a thing of just momentum that you need to be carrying. And I feel like the momentum was still there for Wichita following game two. Even if you lose that one, you're still playing at pace. You're still keeping up with Delaware. You're still finding shot opportunities. You're still taking away boost. And I don't think you can let that one game say, oh, well, I guess we lost game two. We need to be we need to be looking towards the sub right now. It's mm -hmm. just, it just pulls away all the momentum that you built. And it took you game one and two to get there. Yeah, and um, when you're talking about time, room for experimentation, you know, maybe game number one, there's a lot of that to be had no matter who you are, no matter who you're playing against, no matter who you've played against. Like, if you played against them before is what I'm trying to say, you know? Uh, teams play differently every single day. It's going to be a new experience no matter how many times you play a team, especially here, high-level Rocket League teams like in the EGFC. We are going to go to a very short break before we do get, I believe that's Villanova and DePaul University coming right at you here soon. Do not tune away. We'll be back with you guys in just a couple of minutes.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Game number two is going on. It's going to be this time Villanova going up against DePaul. Both these teams have a bit of a rough start, but I got to say nothing too bad. They've impressed us mm. each, especially in week number one. Villanova came out swinging, has looked fantastic. I'm a horse, always a highlight. He put me in a montage, which like I, I feel like I'm not supposed to be biased, but he put me in a montage, Tugboat, like... Oh, oh, like in one of his plays where his... Something that you got to cast. You got I to wish I was good enough at playing Rocket League to play in his montage, but no. <laughs> Sadly, I'm not. I, yeah, no, you he's know, got your voice playing over some fiery yeah, plays that he has, what you're saying. I, I, I made him look cooler, and that's... There you go. That's all I need, or at least I felt like I... Either way, you get I'm the sure point. I'm the sure game. It's, really good one. it's DePaul versus Villanova. Let's see if Villanova can turn around these uh, rough pass we've seen come out of them. Yes, sir. You want to talk to me a little bit about how they've gotten to where they've gotten and what their record is. Yeah, I mean, Villanova came out in week one and looked arguably a lot better than I think anybody thought they were actually going to. Uh, they won 3-0 versus St. John's in a very, very dominant fashion, but then the weeks following that just were not the same level of consistency. DePaul uh, came out and did, ironically enough, the reverse of that. Got 3-0'd by a Seton Hall that looked more dominant than ever, but then the two weeks following that looked better than ever so I, I think there's really a, a tale of two sides of the same coin here gotcha. these guys and deciding this matchup is really going to decide their momentum heading into the latter half of the season yeah tale of two teams you know i'm one for alliteration i'm a horse riles and zen made up of our villanova squad dpu that's DePaul university who just got scored against rumble not imposter and lavish making up this orange DePaul university squad yeah, good job by Ryle. Solid stuff all around. The rotations just weren't quite there for the Paul side. Let's see what they can pull off now, though. As we've uh, got a second round of kickoff going. I don't think one goal decides this series at all. Oh, this shot can be dangerous. It's upper left bins. I'm a horse, though, says Nay. Check <laughs> that one out. Ah, I love it. Get it? I do. No. I do. Wow. Hey, it's my, for horses, right? Isn't that what they yeah, say? Yeah, my, my knowledge of horses extends about that far. So okay. that's all you get. Gotcha. I know they're measured in hands when it comes to their height. How interesting. Corner play. Well, you know, you know what? Not imposter. What's up, man? No, I said, you know, if he wants to win this game, he's going to have to pony up. There you there go. That's is. all the horse money. There it is. Now, now they're uh, all out. Now we can actually that's talk all you about got. Uh, I'm, I'm <laughs> sorely disappointed, Cameron. Or Dor, excuse me. I'm, I'm sure we'll find something else. Don't okay, worry. Got you. It's like using the first thing, like I'm disappointed or something. <laughs> <laughs> Three minutes, 22 seconds. That's a nice little pop back over. I'm a horse. Sidelining up to this one, bouncing in. Lavish realizes that angle is not true as Zen puts this out. Now that's the third or fourth demolition for this game, Door. I don't know if you're still keeping track, but it's Four turned out bloody thing. already. Yeah. And, uh, with three minutes still on the clock, it's still plenty of time, mm. like I said. Default really wants to keep an eye on. These demolitions are creating some serious opportunities for them. It's about finding the back minute quickly, though, right? Getting the ball from one end of the field to the other. You're using demolitions to reset the opposing team. But if you don't build on that, then what's really the point? This should be a textbook save for Zen. Hey, it gets a little bit saucier with it than you might comfortably go, but does still pull it off. Half with the try and recover here. Slows him down just enough that Rumble's able to come in and take advantage of it, though. Created a shot opportunity for DePaul. Not imposter. Big miss down the side lane, though. Mm -hmm. He's open. Also puts it off the top bar. Rumble. Good touch back down. This great ball control so far from DePaul. It just hasn't netted them a goal yet. Yeah. Cool hand Luke over here. Maintaining well under pressure. That could have gone another way. And a player with a less steady hand would have almost certainly yielded the goal against. Now I'm a horse. Popping this one up. That is going to be decently stopped, but now cornered out. Riles all the way over on that one as a orange DePaul University player came flying past, not able to get on top of that one as Rumble trying to take this one out. I'm a horse, gets beaten to the middle. 50 50, lost by him, not imposter. Did a good job of bouncing this over, and Lavish tried to get the interference there against the uh, defenders because. This ball will not block itself, no matter how many times you yell at it. It's something I've learned, Dor. It's okay. Yeah, I, I've seen your goalkeeping. It, you're still trying. Hey, man. Oh, there's no what? need to bring that up on broadcast. Wow. <laughs> that was three of the for Riles. He just yes. flew it over top. Three men committing to the same area. Just a rough touch from Rumble. In fact, a second one even to put it further in towards the net. 
big opportunity for Villanova. Wow. Getting that lead to two is just so important for this team. Yeah, 113 kilometers per hour, Door. Pretty fast. That was fast. Without a defense, punch. Buddy. Last line of defense here. Fantastic job. Riles was putting that one up as the other two DePaul University members going for boost. Person in the middle, for side, person in the corner, went to corner. Makes sense. Up and down, lavish. Trying to get to this one. Imposter trying to see this down bottom. Rumble on the corner. He's going to face not one, but two. Cornered in. Riles actually gets the bare top of this car against that. Another demo brings us to six door. Seven door. Holy. Oh, oh my goodness. Riles, ow. Not Imposter can't quite lay it down in towards the net quite yet. Villanova on the counterattack now looking to extend that lead to three, but even the two with 45 seconds on the clock. I mean, all they have to do is just continue to run it down, and they'll be feeling yeah. fine and dandy. Lavish with a big clear as well to rip even more away. Yeah. Uh, not tag, not uh, hide and go seek, but keep away. That's the children's game that's being played here and now. This is exactly what no uh, Villanova knows what they're doing, is what I'm saying. Now the eighth demo coming on through. 20 seconds. They don't want to. Give this one up easily. Defensive plays in there with not one but two defensive stops. Keep this alive. Even if they win by one, that's still a W through and through. And I do believe that last little bit of sand passing through the hourglass. Villanova is one game round one. Yeah, I mean, it was honestly about as close as we were expecting to. Villanova's looking to put a win up on the board, take themselves up to a 2 2. I'm a horse, looks good as ever. Riles came in. Cleaned up arguably two very, very straightforward goals. Like, they were not expecting him to find that easily. Uh, DePaul's control has been pretty indomitable for the most part, right? They've only been scored on because of their own mistakes. So I feel like it hasn't even been Villanova necessarily outplaying DePaul so much as Villanova just capitalizing on a couple of really big mistakes that DePaul made throughout the game. So if DePaul can turn this around and instead of just having possession and having really good touches, Ooh. turn one, two, three of those into a shot opportunity at the net, then you're feeling a lot better. So I think it's, so I think it's shifting quickly. Pardon me. Mm -hmm. Weirdly, <laughs> it's on quiz. Uh, shifting quickly shifting from quickly. defensively like attacking it. side, <laughs> using that ball control and deciding when to step on the gas pedal for them. Yeah, shifting quickly. Door is going back to it because he's right. The rotations here that is just we talk about cleaning up edges a lot. That's really one that you're going to bite the bullet if you do not have this down. If you're not well coordinated with your squad and you're not coming back defensively, not not if but when this ball gets taken away from you on offensive pushes, you are going to pay the price. Now, this wasn't some sort of huge blowout by any means. 2-0, pretty standard score for your round one in a best of five matchup. But how Villanova comes through and kind of performs after this, where these two scores aren't going to be just found, like, lent in their pockets so easily, Dor, that will be the measure of DePaul. I mean, so far tonight has been entirely defined by game twos in adaptation. Ain't that the truth. Yeah, let's see what DePaul's got in their back. Oh, boy. Wow, that almost started off There's just as bad as the last one. I'm horse. Oh, it's an early jump off the wall. He was looking for, like, a, rent, uh, a roof pinch to try and pull that one out to try and make it work um is a danger okay but just not enough ball control to make it count rumble another good one three man commit blocked by their own player oh, oh lavish man kicking. not not himself but his teammate for that one good challenges yeah. though all around by DePaul to keep the pressure up rumble will lay one in not available but i'll tell you who is home it's not imposter it's got a beautiful okay. ceiling shot but just can't quite get underneath that ball to give it that little bit of extra lift you want so much mid say, play now, and DePaul holding on strong. Yeah, DePaul does make it look good. Sometimes, oh, excuse me, like that shot we just saw, though, better to be, or better to have a good shot than a flashy one, right? A little bit faster, a little bit more, oh, excuse me, a little bit faster, a little bit more coordinated would have been a different story. Oh, I'm a horse with the second touch, and they're right up in the face. Dunk City coming through here. The embarrassment against the man not imposter. Tried to get to it, not gonna happen so easily. Just shy of 100 kilometers, rocketing on in there. How dare he? I was taking a drink of my water when he didn't. I tried to scream and it just went down the wrong tube. Oh my God, what a beautiful shot though. From my horse, it's a dangerous one from Rumble. Back out towards the side. The neutral game's being so good here from DePaul. They just have to turn it into a shot. That's all I'm saying, right? They've been effectively 
winning this game neutrally. They've been winning it in the majority of the 50-50s. They've been winning it in pressure. But Tapal has made their opportunities count so much better. Not imposter now as the one to lay it out. Tapal back in possession of this ball, back holding on and back looking to even up this game and win it. But if they weren't able to clear it out after game one, I don't know, man. They really got to start doing it here. I think we have a uh, tugboat being dropped out for whatever internet issues. So I'll hold on to this one. Let's see what we got now. Villanova still keeping on the pressure. I, I admire Villanova's ability to balance the defensive and attacking side right now and recognize that they don't have to play super hard. This is an open goal, though. No one to finish it. Beautiful touch from Riles, the only man back. Now back on the attacking side. Fast play. Great counterattack from Villanova. And it's caps like that. Right, they're not letting DePaul get away with anything. The second there is the tiniest chink in the armor, they are immediately going in. And that wasn't a tiny chink, that was a big chink, that was a gap, that was open pitted defense from DePaul. And great job for Villanova for spotting it out. Yeah, um, dip off for two seconds. We got our Villanova squad already scoring up. What, 15 seconds to halftime. Another nice save here by Not Imposter. Another demolition here. Did I miss any of those, Dor? Uh, I don't think so. I think your, your count remains true. However, it may not for long. Rumble over top. Nothing to be had. It's ball towards center. It's not really threatening. It's a 1v2 on attacking into the goal. DePaul, again, continue to have ball possession, but not create attacking opportunities, or at least threatening ones at that. Whereas every single ball Villanova lays over mm. feels like it's just heading straight into the Kenny Loggins danger zone. Yeah, and uh, we'll be hanging out there for too, too long because, like you said, these have been some very, very fast ones. And very impressed with the defense that is able to put up with not one but multiple of these in a row. Just putting them up like that is skillful enough. Defense answering like that it can definitely be aggravating, but you got to respect it. got to respect it. Not imposter with a nice little pop out. Rumble on a runaway here in Zen just makes that takeaway look very easy, Dor. I'm sticking down. This is exactly what we saw in the previous series, right? The pressure's on. They get that two-goal lead. All of a sudden, they can start playing defensive. DePaul's kind of sputtering out. They've got to start coming alive. It's a shot opportunity for not imposter, but the players are too closely grouped together. And that's been the real problem for DePaul so far. Uh -oh. uh, they've looked really great possession-wise. They've had some really, really good touches on the ball. I I've been impressed by their team play. When they get into the attacking half, they're consistently double, triple committing into tiny little areas that they have no business being in. And for, I believe, both of Villanova's goals, they have exploited that to some degree. The second one was arguably just the biggest gap in exploitation of that that we've seen thus far. Don Imposter has to play aggressive now, though. DePaul has to be playing for goals because they've got no way back. There it and is. They one. Rumble centered up and put into the bottom right corner <laughs> to put one up on the board and at least get them close, Tugboat. Yeah, so, you know, I just realized I'm chuckling a little bit. This is literally your 60-second drill, right? One minute exactly on the clock, down by one, what do you do? This is not a time to dump everything into offense. You do The last thing you want to do is drop another one. So lead of two is seriously the beginnings of something uh, numerically important. Lead of one is no lead indeed, Rocket League, as I like to say. Foster taking this across the middle here. Trying to bring this out from the middle as well. I'm a horse. The nice touch so far. That second one is going to someone. Riles tried to accept this one down bottom, but Rumble was there to give him the business. A tumble indeed. Nice pop away. Rumble trying to get on top of this as well. Riles Rumble, the classic matchup there is lavish. The good hit out. Zen, I'm a horse doubling up in the middle. I'm an imposter. Or not imposter. Coming in there. Oh man, just a little bit too high. Rumble, almost, and we're getting so close to overtime. If they can just get one more. I don't think it's going to happen, Tug. So I think that save is it. I think the missed shot. Believe. Oh, my <laughs> lord, that hurts for the pole. Oh, man. And watching that ball land just in front, right on the other side of your bumper, where you're sitting in that driver's seat. Man, been there before. Been there before. Talk to me some about these numbers, Dor. Yeah, I mean... It's just been Villanova laying on the pressure and from long distance as well for all of the attacks that DePaul caught, for all of the pressure, for all of the ball possession that they had. They don't turn it into things because, well, they, they get forward, they move up, move up, move up, move up, get past the mm -hmm. half, move up, move up, move up, move up. They get to the back of the attacking half, move up, move up, and then they're like, oh, 
I guess we're here now. I guess we're here, we're, yeah. We should probably shoot at some point in time, <laughs> and then they throw one at the net, but it's half-hearted at best, and Villanova easily clears it out, creates an even more dangerous opportunity of their own, catching off the overcommit and going for a counterattack, and mm. that'll continue to work for them because DePaul continues to get more anxious. They continue to play more oh. aggressive, try and force these oh. opportunities. Those openings just become even bigger. That's the... Not the destination door; it's the journey. That's what this team is. What this team has learned here, because it's an apt analysis. There, it's a good way to put it. They just come up here, and the opportunity presents, and then just not a whole lot there. A lot of shots on board. Now, there's a lot to be said for taking these over and over again, but again, quality as well as quantity here in Rocket League, and again, especially, especially once you get these higher level of Rocket League champions, grand champions galore around here. Game number three, coming through here. Villanova has only lost games one and two by a single score door. It's as close as it gets. All right, DePaul, what you got left in your gas tank? You got to show something. Oh, no, a double commit towards the midfield. It could be another early goal. Lavish. Woo. Ooh. Big high relief here for the DePaul side. What's up, Marshall go. Mathers? <laughs> yeah. I like it. I like it. He's got a shot. He's going for bump. Oh! And oh my lord, the demo, the bump on the mm. keeper. There's nothing you can do about it. Just great attacking stuff. From yep. Oh no, it was Zen actually who came in and played that. Up. Good job. It kind of looks like, maybe it's just me, but it kind of looks like a player came in and still kept on going on the other side. And there was nobody, uh, you know, you know, the, 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 it looked like he was the one being demolished is what I'm saying there. Excuse me. 20 seconds in. I got to score up. Rolling around. Looking for a second. On the board, of course, that's the, that would be DePaul's first. They've not scored the first. That's blue team. 30 seconds in. Other side, non poster We'll be taking this one. Nothing sus about that one. I'm a horse. The nice block towards the middle. Lavish trying to ground this one out, but it's it popped up. This is not where he wants it. I'm a horse trying to take this one out. Rumble with a nice takeaway, but thankfully, blue it does have a, enough boost here. Not a lot, but enough. And oh, this is as open as they get! Lavish isn't able to ground this one quickly, stop it, and line it up for another shot! That was as open as they get, Dor. It can't take the Paul another four minutes to try and find one goal here. They need to fire back early so they can start playing their game as opposed to trying to play reactionary against Villanova. Otherwise, this game's gonna continue to play out how it does with Villanova just yeah. applying light pressure. They don't need to do that much. They know the mistake. Oh, oh it's no! Oh, I mean, it's a tiny mechanical error, but it might have just cost him big time. Yeah, if that decides this game, that will be just so salt in the wound, right? That's going to sting is what I'm saying, Dor. Like you said, just a tiny, he tiny mechanical, right? Like, huh? how, he got Batmobile in the Octane. I mean, yeah, I feel like I, you're asking I, for it at that point. Any other larger hitbox, that have been a different story. That that was shaving pixels off the side. It, oh my goodness, Lavish making this one look easy. Look at this pass and look at this shot. Throw 118 in front of that kilometers per hour, and that makes for a sexy shot. Yeah, that's actually DePaul, I think, at the, the peak of what they've been trying to do so far, which are these quick little passing plays in towards the midfield. It's like watching Brazil play in uh, normal football, it, right? It's just so... Quick, so small. It doesn't work quite as well in Rocket League, though, because you need to be controlling space with those three players. But when they can outplay their opponents, when they are allowed a little bit more time in that tiny little 3v3 that they want to be playing all the time, they can create really good opportunities out of it. They're going to put themselves up to 3 1 now. And this lead all of a sudden got extended big time. Yeah, this went from DePaul University. Score difference of one. No biggie. No real pressure quite yet. Now it's. Uh, you know, flipping the script, 100%. That they have scored more in this game already. First two minutes, less than two minutes, and they have games one and two. Total of two across those two games, lost both two to one. So again, very, very close. This is still anybody's game. That's what we gotta say here. Paul, they've uh, looked like they've actually backed off the offensive a little bit. Maybe gotten a little bit complacent. I certainly hope not. Riles all the way back. Smart man there. The second touch almost proves true on that one. That would be devastating to side of DePaul. Just like that. Man, oh man, DePaul University putting up another one here, quadrupling up against Villanova. I mean, Villanova is just 
crippled defensively. Mm. All of the confidence that we saw from them challenging all these balls, they're not stopping them at the source anymore. There were two people just sitting in goal. It wasn't one person on the post. It wasn't one person guarding the backboard. No, it's just two, same position, in goal. It might as well have been one. Just hanging it might out. Have been better to be one at that point. This is Villanova kind of crumpling. Would have been we've seen them play well lane. so far yeah. tonight, but they've really got to clean things up. I'm a horse. Back out wide, it's square into the hands of Rumble, out to Imposter. This could be a dangerous shot opportunity, but it'll let it pass him by. I'm a horse now, controlling the ball up the line. Great challenge by DePaul. They're looking so good right now. Lavish mm. to try and finish it off, and the pressure just does not stop from the orange side. Villanova finally have a chance to get this one out. And they're going to need to start scoring these goals right now because they've got a long ways to go before things are even. Yeah. Three scores, two minutes. That's a average of, what, 45 seconds per, something like that, just to tie it all the way up a... Tall order indeed. This is a longer one, not imposter taking this one across the middle again. This ball just absolutely living in the middle. Might as well pitch a tent or get a mailing address, start paying taxes or something. Oh man, does not like living in the middle, wants to move up in this world. Top part of Blue's goal, that's the Villanova's, is where it ends up. 5-1 now with a minute 40 left on this, even 100 seconds. I mean, I'm actually just going to start saying it right now for Villanova. I think you start looking towards the next game. You got to start turning around momentum. Uh, the I think at this point, I mean, we talk a lot about having to play more aggressive to try and make up goals. I don't think you're playing more aggressive to try and make up goals. I think you're trying to play more aggressive to build momentum for next game yep. at this point, right? Get that make confidence, that get some more shots back on the goal because closing out four goals is going to be, I mean, just ridiculously difficult for them to actually do. They've had a lot of ball control in recent moments, but DePaul look like they're just comfortable playing on the defensive side. They know what their lead looks like. I'm a horse to put one more in, but when we see one more, then, then I'll call it within range tug, but I can't say with just this one. Yeah. Um, minute 15, the 75 seconds, three scores, what, 25 seconds or so. It's really, really it's definitely possible, especially what we've seen five seconds, uh, five second goals. If this kind of happens off the kickoff, that's actually a decent angle. Riles knows that one to stop it, ground it right where it starts, put that one right dead in its tracks. Don't want to let that trajectory go true for any while longer. Three minutes, non imposter putting this one over. This is not where Villanova needs this ball to be. Oh no, and Rumble with a very, very fast one. Very fast one. Would have loved to have gotten the speedometer out on that one. Lavish, ooh, bunches of touches here in the corner. Poster, round, rest of blue, getting this one out. Doing a great job of it so far. That's centered up decently, but isn't able to get back on over to it. 30 seconds, three goals. Again, the most we've seen EGF history-wise, six goals in 30 seconds. The most impressive feat I've ever seen in my entire life from Georgetown. <gasps> What? How does that happen? How does it happen in Grand Champions? How did it not get scored on? That's my question. Yeah, right, right. how does it happen and not get taken advantage of, right? Yeah, okay. We're good. DePaul wins. Everything is right in the world <laughs> right now. They're going to have to pull off quite a ridiculous reverse sweep, though. They want to take this thing. And I uh, granted, they look great here, but Villanova look a lot better in those last two minutes. Yep. 5-2 is our score line here for DePaul. 2-1 is the score line. Now... In this last game, seven shots total, that's more than games one and two collectively. Villanova, one's for the uh, consistency, right? You know what to expect when you're talking about Villanova. Two scores first game, two scores second game, two scores third game, and it's only games one and two that takes in the distance. Yeah, it makes me question whether it's an option of defense or not. I, I do think it's defense, but I think it plays bigger in that. I think it's just confidence-wise. I think that last goal actually meant a lot for Villanova and just building themselves back up. It was a really great little passing play uh, between the three of them to try and at least put something up on the board. And I think they've got potential. Still. I don't think they're out of this by any means. DePaul don't have all the momentum in the world. They're coming in. Yeah, it was a nice last game. I think this is effectively a game one situation as far as mentality goes. Uh, it's okay. just about whether or not Villanova can continue to fix those mistakes because they, they look better towards the end of the last game. But they, they were still little holes. Here and there. And defensively, they're going to have to learn to adapt to everything that DePaul have been throwing at them. Because fr quite frankly, it's been a lot more than it had been in games prior. And I don't think that's stopping anytime soon. Yeah, it's the passes, really. If these guys get the quick, surefire passes they've proven themselves to be capable of, this game's over before it starts. Oh my god, we can't... Like that! 
Oh, he got it. I got it. <laughs> you know what they say, Tug. Third tries the charm. Rumble over top. That's. It was. It was. Uh. Yeah. No. It was. Excuse me. It was not imposter over the top. Rumble also over the top, and then Lavish's turn. Yeah. Put the ball that in. was. Uh. Oh, again, I know I say it sometimes, but that's about as picture perfect as the lineup drill as you get. You literally get some computers to try and line those up. You're not going to have it much more straight. Now Bill and Ovest fire back. It, early lead here is actually huge for DePaul, though, right? It just makes them so much more comfortable. Yep. Put Villanova back in what I call a losing mindset. Right? Nice. When you get comfortable being behind, that's when I start getting worried about you in a game. Yep. And Villanova are getting a little bit too comfortable being behind. I want to see him work for it. I want to see him step on the gas, but I want to see him get creative, start Ooh. playing for demolitions. There we go. A little bit of life from I'm a horse there to keep go. this ball alive. Lavish isn't going to be able to do much with this. I don't think. It's going to take a miracle play to actually make anything that, out of this ball in the corner. Rumble Force out. Uh, not Imposter is, is pretty much left just there on their lonesome. That's going to have a pretty good opportunity here to set up a ball if Rumble misses it. Lays it out back towards half field. Good challenge by I'm a horse to keep the ball up in the air. Better challenge by Rumble. I don't think anyone's actually there to catch mm. it. Oh, no, it's not that bad. Bouncer? Okay, we, yeah. This one gets fine. Villanova have been in an awkward state for the past while. They haven't been able to create any of those solid attacking opportunities. And like I said, a lot of that's because whenever they have those opportunities, it's been because DePaul have been the ones to mess up, but DePaul have not messed up recently. Yeah, it, it's really just like they needed to warm up a little bit. Those simple mistakes that were yielding goals earlier that Villanova was taking advantage of at time, for the most part, over and done with. This is game four. We're in extra Rocket League time, and those small mistakes simply not happen so frequently. These boys are warmed up. These people are warmed up, I should say. I do not know much about their preferred pronouns. Riles in, Riles down, Riles won, one to one, 303. So that's what? 13031? Nice and even all the way across the top. How cool is that? I mean, it's another pickup goal for Riles. I don't think he's complaining. A lot of the goals that he's found have just <laughs> been kind of open net. He's vibing. They've been solid plays, right? Great attacking opportunities. Good job recognizing them. And that shows how much positioning can actually matter for something like this. Rumble goes for a double touch. I don't think this one's going in. It's actually more dangerous about what happens afterwards. Lavish, though, can't get much power on it to keep it out. I will tell you, though, these Villanova players are going to be running relatively low on boost here in a second. They should be able to refuel now that that clear came out from Horse. Ooh, big miss on the corner boost. He's actually going to prioritize picking the ball up after the boost. Great job yep. taking it into an air dribble. Over the opposing oh! player. Oh! Don't slip reset. Oh, if he just... Oh, his wheels... There it is. Miles they later. earned it. Two one. You know, I can't award him style points for it, but it was so close to looking good. <laughs> yep. I think this is the obligatory. Uh, that is far better than I can ever do. Yada yada. Casters are bad at games. I know I'm bad at this game. But... At the end of the day, it really was beautiful. It did not have the perfect clip reset, but it doesn't matter. Team-based game, right, Dor? That's why you have your teammates right there. Followed you up and got it done where you couldn't. And it was a tall order. I shouldn't say it like that. Got it done when they're in a much better position to get it done, I should say. Right? Can we just re-nickname Riles to the janitor? <laughs> he's, he's cleaning up. He's sweeping up. I like yeah, it. Yeah, that's all he's done. I mean, that's all the he cleaner. has to do. <laughs> he's, job and he's done a great job of it. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, what, what's the meme? It's not, oh, man, oh, man. Perfect positioning here from Lavis. Just completely puts this one up right across the backboard and puts in the second one. Riles is not able to get up to it. I think that was I'm a horse who was flying and trying to get on the other side of this one. Not going to happen so easily. 2-2. Two, 2-2, two. Two, two, two minutes on the clock as well. I mean, I don't think you get much, a, much more of a perfect scoreline than that. Oh, we're, not. we're right at where we want to be. However, neither of these teams are comfortable quite yet. And this is a tough part for DePaul, right? These matches only get harder from here when you're facing up against Villanova. You're not going to find yourself at a lead like that anytime soon again. Bad touch by Zen leads to a 50-50 in the midfield. This is a big touch for Armour Horse. He gets this down to the corner. It's not bounce center, though. Oh, it was just a little bit too far in to be considered really, really threatening as a pass. But... They will maintain ball pressure. Rumble with the nice little touch. Non Poster trying to lay it down center. Good rotations again from the DePaul side. The ball management has been just exceptional from them. Villanova, though, look to strike back, look to take advantage of the little opportunities. These holes in the defense. No, Rumble gets a great touch. And I feel like that's the entire thing. You're just waiting 
for DePaul to flip up one time. But until then, they're going to have all the pressure. They're going to have the shots. It's going to be lavish finishing that one off. Two to three, DePaul keep themselves alive. Look at this, two against three here. Not even a particularly fast one, does not need to be, Dor. I'm a horse on the wall there. Usually, I think horses operate better on grounds. Maybe that's why that one's not taken in. Oh no, again! Dude, so DePaul University takes us from a two to two tie, and in seven seconds, doubles up four to minute on the clock, purchase themselves a lot of breathing room and possibly game number four door i mean you went for a cheesy kickoff you got punished for going for a cheesy kickoff what can i say that's all there is to it great job taking advantage of it though from the double hole player lavish look for another one it's a great pass to his teammate good clear zen out wide i'm a horse oh with the rear end of his car actually got someone that it would have been really really nice for him great save though to push the ball back out wide by i'm a horse the Villano side actually running pretty low on boost right now if I'm keeping track appropriately. Zen, yeah, flat at zero, just trying to flip away at the attacking players from DePaul. We're running out of space to work with as well as time. That demo though, that could be big. The clear though from Not Imposter gives them enough breathing room and time to actually get themselves back in this one. Oh my god, 18 demolitions now. If we hit 20, I'm not sure what we're gonna do. Almost guaranteed, because we are looking down the barrel for game number five. 20 seconds to go, DePaul University. Up by two, it's gonna be a very, very tall order if we see Villanova come back at this one. Gotta happen here, D, you bringing it in. I'm a horse, just comes slapping up the top, little anti-aircraft firearm in and of himself to stop that one in its tracks, doesn't matter. Now, one second, score difference is two. Even with a nice pinch like that from I'm a horse, even with a nice pinch, not gonna matter. Four, two, four to Paul. We are going to game number five. And DePaul are putting up a hell of a fight. I'm honestly not feeling Villanova right now. They don't have the uh -oh. confidence that they did in game one and game two. They've been, you know, that the shots have been relatively half-hearted. Riles was happy to put in two that were kind of hand over to him. But the, again, the creativity just isn't there. DePaul, you look at three, four of their shots were just pings between the three of them. Beautiful little passing plays. And you can really tell these guys' teamwork is top-notch. And really what's yes. gotten them as far as they have come, remember, it's DePaul who are the ones who are two and one right now. Villanova are looking to break even and bring themselves up to two and two. So I would argue this match actually means a lot more to Villanova than it does to Paul. And it may just slip through their fingers here. I think we're getting ready for a game number three. Tug, how are you feeling about this one? Which way? Game which way? Are you leaning? Just wait. Yeah. Game, five. Yeah, game number oh, five. Yeah, five. yeah. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. I, you know, I, I thought five. I was losing it here. I thought I, I was losing it here. Theory. What am I thinking about here? Dude, honestly, DePaul University is on an absolute tear right now. I'm a horse trying to make me eat my words on that one. But ain't no sugar cube. <laughs> Doesn't taste that good. Oh, that's Zen actually down bottom. He is going to be the one stuffing words in various places. Ten seconds in. Already a score on here. DePaul University, they are getting my vote. Even with electrifying plays from Villanova already. Yeah, every time they've gotten that one goal, it's made them feel so much more comfortable. But... DePaul has been quick to fire back. Zen, oh boy, he's going for the dribble. He's got the flake. Lavish, this should be a textbook save. Did they get enough on it? No! Oh, it's free. Oh, it's Zen free. With the no, no. Just barely here for Zen. Question mark? Man, oh man. In the chat, did he disconnect? Oh, that's a disaster for DePaul. Wow. That is. He crashed oh, as DePaul was careening towards their goal. That, I, okay, I feel bad for that one. Yep. No, no, I, I can look in their back game. I think they're, I think yeah. they're all three there. Yeah, yes, they are now. Yeah, Riles is in. I'm a horse left side. Nova blue, orange, lavish rumble. Not imposter, and there you go. Zen's not gonna let that one happen. To them, there you go. Well done. That's Zen with two goals, two shots, and there's his first save. 40 seconds into this one. And this has been an electrifying match so far. I, I mean, yeah, so I said DePaul Villanova is the one who's come through. And excuse me, I'm being rude out here. What was your what was your prediction, Cameron? You, you asked me, I did not ask you. I'm sorry. I, I'm still 50-50. That's why I asked you, because then you can <laughs> smart or dumb. I'm not I'm not putting my name on this one. It's too close. Oh. Not impossible for making it even more so. Coming back from the break and finding the net. You know, after the, the close opportunity earlier, I feel like you really want that one. The player took it out of the net. You know, I'm a large proprietor for the homie goal, but this match matters too much to both of these teams for, for Villanova to allow that one back in. 2-1, they still got a lead. It's a lot less comfortable than it was 15 seconds ago, though, Tug. Let's see if they can make it larger. 
It's definitely gonna be the goal. Man, oh man, Lavish is gonna pay, or excuse me, I'm a horse is gonna pay for his life on that one. Solid defense and that explosion gonna yield no opportunity to be able to see through that cloud and get something done. The offense still got the demo though. Only three second, two and a half second response. Not sure. Oh my goodness! I'm a horse intercepting this one all day long, taking it back for six. I guess you know, uh, you know, put put a uh, football football reference to it, right? It's not well, six points. That'd be ridiculous. <laughs> I I genuinely hope not. Counting by six and seven sounds sounds like not my cup of tea. I'll say at least that much. What do we got though? It's DePaul down to 330. Left on the clock. It's time to assess the state of the game here for DePaul, right? Do we start playing aggressive now or do we wait till two minutes comes in? Because, I mean, I feel like their mid-game changes have been very good, but the best timed one was when they found themselves at that massive lead. And that just tells you how much timing actually comes into the factor of when do we make this change versus what do we need to change? Both of those questions matter oh. so much. And I'm a horse is looking to brain them all. Great oh, shot by Ryle. Blocked by the two remaining defenders. Not imposter in towards the net. Then should be an easy clear for us. Yep. Up the wall now, and they're looking to create a casting opportunity here. Lavish has intercepted it though. Oh, now his teammate big miss towards the corner. That was a big opportunity for them. Still maintaining ball possession. The passing plays are just so good. They rocket the ball at one another. There's just so much speed, and they're always there for the finish. It's just a little bit too predictable for Villanova right now. They're getting used to it because every single one of yep. the Paul's shots is, I mean, coming relatively the same fashion. Except the for that one. That oh, one was oh my God. Yeah, just a straight stop ball right here in front of Blue Goal. You put that up for Rumble, he is going to take that every single time, twice on Sundays, make points from it, every one of those as well. Three to two as Rumble on the side of DePaul now striking back on this one, just shy of halftime, so score difference of one separates these two teams from a tie. Action, De not, uh, wait, <laughs> do not imposter. Why do I keep trying to say that? Not imposter coming through there and try to get something done himself at the top. Not going to happen so easily against the defense of Villanova. One goal is all they need, but Paul have never felt further away from winning this series. Going Ooh. all the way through five games, you've gotten this far. To see a reverse sweep fall through your fingers would be just crippling to their confidence. Playing in the midfield, maintaining possession. They're playing the game that they were playing whenever they were actually winning Ooh. these coming out ahead in goals, but I feel like Villanova's getting a little bit more comfortable playing against it. Riles up in the midfield, great challenge by non-imposter. There shouldn't be much to finish this one off. Beautiful pass, actually, back to Zen. Oh, wow, even better defense by DePaul. Actually having the presence of mind to turn around for that pass before anything bad happened. All yep. three of them got there. It's gonna make sure that absolutely nothing bad happens with that cross. And now they get to continue their attacking side, this time with more boost. Watching these, uh, watching these passes come through and just literally telegraphing where they're going to be, deciding whether or not it's time to rotate. That's decently open. There is an orange player on the other side. DePaul, yes. So takeaway happens. Still staying on the side of DePaul's here. That's orange. Bring this out. Not imposter. Zen up. Zen out. Zen block. Nicely done. You have to roll around and set this one up again to try for it that's decently centered but riles over on this going for corner but that's gonna be zen who pops that out hits it with the corner of his car and this one out of dodge for the time being i'm a horse the big pop on this one door another demo that's 21. three two now riles out wide villanova they just have to hold on i mean you don't even have to play it attacking side riles although if he could find one more empty goal he's got no boost to do it it's time a horse's turn try and lay it in blocked by lavish depaul holding on by the skin of their teeth right now but it's definitely anything but comfortable an aggressive play into the corner he's got no boost to make this count does pick up the villanova sides that's actually going to give them so much more momentum in the attacking half three players scrambling around and go flying at the ball just trying to rip oh. time away up at this clock. With 10 seconds left, it's still DePaul on the attacking side, doing everything in their power to make it count, but it might not be enough here, Tug. Not that popped out, out, out and no boost. It. He doesn't have it. He's against corner, but has no boost again. Okay. Out, Zen lets this one die on the ground, along with the dreams of the reverse sweep. DePaul University, Villanova breaking the mold here. They take a W. Three to two, not two. They score more than two goals in this one, and it comes out paying off in spades in the end.
what an electrifying match door goes all the way down to the wire with really individuals popping off like consistently throughout but nobody really coming through with such a dominant performance that you could say like oh mvp clear title right no i mean this one was a battle of teams very different yes. stylistically very different in terms of what makes them good versus where are their weaknesses to try and take advantage of i feel like both of them did a really good job of adapting towards those and it's a shame to see the goal that matters be the one that actually came off of a disconnect i mean the one Ooh. goal it's just Ooh. unfortunate for them they'd, even be, in, they'd be in overtime right now you I'm know actually it's, it's not villain over players in chatter being pretty good sports about it uh, i okay. think I don't, i'm not certain they're offering up a replay on the final game but uh it seems like DePaul are actually declining it so okay it, it's unfortunate you hate to see it but i mean these two are going to be rivals for the rest of the season i want to see them go mm -hmm. at one another in playoffs when they both kind of come to full fruition we'll see exactly what they've got as for sure. what we've got though it's another game coming up on the horizon it's georgetown versus university of connecticut and i know you guys won't want to miss it we'll be right back
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Third series of the night. Tugboat tonight's last one, but don't forget there's more on the horizon, not to mention that RIT <laughs> versus University of Colorado game that is just sure to be... Oh, I'm going to be watching. I'll tell you that well, much. Uh, this chess. one, though, I think is going to be just as good. UConn versus Georgetown for our third of the night. We saw mm -hmm. a five-gamer in the last one, a 3-0 in the first. I think we're missing a couple of score lines here, but we've covered pretty much all our bases well, to start one, right? Yeah, pretty much. So Connecticut versus Georgetown, I think it's going to be a good one. Connecticut have been, I will say, wishy-washy. Georgetown have been mm -hmm. consistent and have improved a lot over the course of the season break. Uh, yeah. I'm curious whether or not Georgetown can actually reach up to UConn, though, in this thing. Yeah, uh, definitely tail of two different teams here, can like we said earlier. Now, do we have information about their overall records, door? You want to talk to me about that? Uh, Coming Georgetown, into week number five. Yeah, Georgetown is sitting at 0-3, and, and UConn, oh man, I've lost their record 1-2, and two, so, I mean, neither, like, ha neither have really found great things. UConn had a really nice little flash in the pan, but I think this is the one where Georgetown can actually start, because I think they had a couple tough matchups. I want to check their, their previous weeks real quick and who they ended up going up against because i don't remember, if I remember yeah particularly. if i remember right we, we uh i think we actually casted one of those and it was an unfortunate loss for the side of yukon um they beat what Ni no it wasn't niagara i'm not 100 percent sure do you have that information in front of you my man uh fairfield beat niagara in the first week so it wasn't okay there. That's, okay it was yeah, georgetown so it was oh three to uh marquette it was georgetown also leave Oh, 03 in the first week as well to Seton Hall and then one more time up against DePaul. So yeah, three actually okay, really, yeah. really tough matchups for them. I think they've got a real shot at this one versus UConn. Yeah, this is going to be Georgetown's best opportunity for taking their first dub. Given that this is coming into week number five, really, in the day, playoff prediction or playoff plans are what's going to be at stake here, really. They do not want to come through here, dropping another one with not necessarily eliminate them. It depends on how other uh, teams are doing, especially in their in their divisions. But definitely make it a lot harder. UConn in the blue, Georgetown in the red. Georgetown, the miracle team we've seen a number of times before here at EGF. UConn, a little bit of something to prove. Indeed. Out the midfield, lots of ball possession being had by both sides right now. We're playing ping pong, and the one thing I want to see is their solid possession. Disaster slows it down, puts it towards center. I'm liking the play I'm seeing from Connecticut right now. It's been slow, it's been calculated, but it's been a lot of pressure over towards Georgetown, and you can't help but feel like they're going to have to break eventually, Ooh. especially after a couple demos. We're taking, keeping track here. Demos between UConn, Georgetown. That is numero uno. A little bit more than one minute in here. Over the top, disaster trying to get this. Now, did we go through these teams? I do not believe that we did. See, uh, UConn left, disaster, Chirpa, and Joys. A roller in here, and Delirious Joker almost takes a nasty accepted pass here to keep that alive for the side of Georgetown, the Hoya, the right. That's Kuko, that's Delirious, and that's Piv making up your Georgetown squad. Yeah, the Georgetown Hoyas were still, you know, <laughs> jury's still out on what a Hoya is. We asked the Georgetown players, and they said they didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> they don't I'm know, not, yeah. As lost as you guys are. <laughs> Maybe it's a, uh, what, the uh, Loch Ness Monster from the Paleolithic Era? Ah, that is not the South Park quote. I'm tired. I can't remember the exact quote. But, um, who knows? Yeah, three minutes in. Probably not. Gonna be too much longer before they score, right? I, I would, especially given the score lines of these, there we go. Speaking into existence, my man, Dora. I control the universe with my mind, apparently. Welcome to casting. <laughs> I love it. Disaster. Good stuff, though. Straight in, good finish, mid height. I mean, all you had to do is get it over the players and put some pace on it back into the net. Mm -hmm. Puts the first one up for Georgetown to have to try and make up. And honestly, it's not looking great for him. It's been Connecticut just large and in charge. So much more pressure. I think wow. a lot of that comes from the aerial ability, right? Both of these Oscars. goals have been caused by the ability of UConn to just get higher up, challenge quicker. Droy has been doing a fantastic job of exactly that. Plays one in for a second one. And that lead becomes a lot more comfortable now. It does, it does. Looking on over towards our scoreboard. Five shots on board the side of UConn. Both of these goals that have been scored have been assisted as well, so spells the tale of a team that is working together very, 
very well. Other side though, Georgetown unfortunately, player with only 20 points and a third shot against them. This is a little bit one-sided here. Good stuff, Disaster. Recognize an opportunity to go ahead and catch that one on an interception. A three-goal lead halfway through the game is certainly comfortable. It'll at least probably get you game one. Georgetown, I, I think, have room to grow in room two in game two. I mean, we've seen it all night. By far the most critical point at any of these series has been the game two so far. And it really tells you whether or not you're gonna change, whether or not you're gonna develop. So far, I don't think Georgetown has actually shown us any of that. They've been mechanically at a disadvantage so they're gonna have to make up for another team play demos catching them off guard creative play but i don't think that just powering up a thing oh i need we need to fix these rotations we need to be being more aggressive is necessarily going to be what fixes this game for georgetown they need to play to the weaknesses of yukon and catch them off guard yep yeah, exactly you know what they say <clears throat> uh beginners intermediates they play the game but experts truly gifted players at a competition they wait for you to make mistake that is going to be Georgetown's best opportunity here especially given that they have found no rest for the weary since then not very many wait are they have they do have shots no they do not there you go there's the first one again speaking into existence controlling things with my mind I'm welcome to two shoutcasting thank you door <laughs> one minute in 30 seconds left on this one gonna be a tall order an average of 30 seconds per goal if we see Georgetown tying this one up oh an all right attacking side for UConn. They're going to lay one more. That's a beautiful 